In this era, where we can get from one part of the world to another in like, I don't know, a couple hours, one might think that trains are just ancient and they're boring forms of commuting. But wait to hear about bullet trains. Despite this technology being around for decades, America has only recently adopted it. What does the incorporation of bullet trains into America's transportation system mean for both the people and the environment? Keep on watching and you're gonna find out. Although Americans are obsessed with automobiles, it's quite a shame that it took a long time for bullet trains to be a part of American society. This service was widely available across Europe, as well as China, and Taiwan, and South Korea, and Japan. The technology used in a bullet train was mastered to perfection almost six decades ago. While many of Japan's trains run at top speeds of, uh, <clears throat> 220 miles per hour, the fastest train in the US, which runs between New York and Boston, is slower with a speed of 160 kilometers per hour. D I didn't do the conversion, you do it. Bullet trains were first seen in Japan in 1964, and our minds were blown at how incredibly fast these trains just zoomed by. Japan was the first country to build dedicated railway lines for uh, bullet train travel. In just a matter of minutes, you can reach your destination, which might have taken hours in a car. Japan's trains are known for being safe, efficient, and punctual. Traveling is very comfortable, too. Their outstanding history of being in service for nearly 58 years is a very clear indicator of how good these trains are. Their performance is really impressive considering how swiftly it moves over 17 hundred miles of track. Many other countries followed Japan's lead in implementing bullet train systems and adopted the Japanese model. Not too long ago, the government invested in Bullet Train Project. That was the country's most expensive public infrastructure undertaking. The route is 171 miles long, and it will link California's Central Valley to the densely populated regions of California, like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Jose. They will also traverse through rugged mountains and violet seismic regions. Probably violent, not violent. Or violet, violent seismic regions. Typo fixed. As a whole, this project will positively impact the lives of millions of people. The entire project is divided into several phases for making execution easy. The first phase will pass through mid-sized cities, Bakersfield, Fresno, and Merced. A total of $4.2 billion was allotted to complete laying tracks between these cities and purchasing trains. In addition to this, the project also got another $2 billion added to its fund. Trains are expensive. Guess how much it was gonna cost to extend this bullet train service to Los Angeles? <sighs> it's $105 billion. Oh no. Just like a coin that has two faces, any initiative is gonna be faced with criticisms. Some call this project an enormous waste of money because they believe the government won't be able to properly implement the project. But what the people forget is that we have the example of Japan's train system in front of us. The Californian bullet train project is also based on this system. So it's a certain that a failure won't happen if we do it right. Some others have questioned the reason behind choosing the long route to run the train rather than going for Interstate 5. But although it might have been faster and cheaper to build tracks through Interstate 5, the passing of the tracks through rural agriculture areas has helped them to be a part of the state. In this way, the towns in this region won't feel left out of the development process. The proposal for a bullet train system was put forward almost five years ago, but getting approval for the construction wasn't a walk in the park. After hundreds of court hearings and tons of legal challenges, the officials had to lay out the details of the project and explain each detail with great accuracy. But despite such a long time, finally everyone was convinced and they could finally move on to laying the foundation and starting the project. Today, several structures are erected and tracks are made out of concrete and they're being built. In the near future, electric cars will run over them. And many believe that this is one of the most innovative and transformative projects that America has witnessed in almost a century. Under the leadership of a few presidents, the funds were allotted to the development of the system of trains. All of them were withdrawn, but thankfully, the current president, Joe Biden, restored the funds and the project is progressing pretty smoothly. Traveling by airplane is really efficient. You get to have a one-of-a-kind experience while you reach your destination in hours. But the environmental impact of airplanes, it's concerning. It's pretty expensive, too. When you travel via an airplane, you're contributing to almost 13% of the country's transportation carbon emissions. That accounts to 3% of total emissions. Think about how your annual vacation could severely damage the Earth if you fly. But this is where the bullet train is successful. An average airplane can carry up to 175 passengers. On the other hand, 1,300 people can travel on bullet trains. So this means that when we compare a train and an airplane going through the same route, 
we find staggering differences in carbon emissions. Overall, the bullet train produces 92% fewer carbon emissions per seat. It will also reduce energy consumption by almost 99%. The energy consumption was further brought down by an advancement that increased the speed at the time. Did you know that bullet trains are 46% more energy efficient than driving by car? The bullet train is also helping people by creating new employment opportunities. This project is a boon to thousands of workers and their families. The California project will also reduce the travel time between San Francisco and Los Angeles to less than three hours. It's gonna help save a lot of time. Normally, you travel between these places by car. However, traffic in LA is terrible. You're gonna be stuck for hours in a sea of vehicles, but a bullet train is effective. It's time-saving. So it'll save you the time that you spend otherwise honking your way in the traffic. The best part about the California project is that it's always possible to make changes to the existing system. If at all you feel like there is something wrong with the bullet train system, improvements can be done using the one billion US dollars that the state of California receives on a yearly basis from the cap and trade program. This is a carbon tax that is levied from companies that emit the maximum amount of greenhouse gases. The orders for buying the first set of trains have already been placed. It was acquired from a passenger train factory in Sacramento. Although other companies out on the East Coast also manufacture trains, the reason why California went with the Sacramento company was that they received much of their green energy from a local solar farm. This significantly brought down emission levels. The bullet train system will also power from multiple sources and improve the conditions of the environment. The system is very profitable too. It's estimated that once the trains can be operated in a fully-fledged manner, 50 million riders are going to use the system annually. So the government can use like, that's like $3.4 billion just by collecting fares from the passengers? The bullet train system will also drastically change the lives of people in the Central Valley region. It's the area where the whole state's agricultural activity is concentrated. Because of the COVID pandemic and a lockdown that disrupted the lives of thousands, many people have been moving to Fresno, which is a town in California. These days, Rents in that area are, is becoming real cheap, and more workers are attracted to the locality. The low cost of living combined with affordable housing is what makes Fresno special. Many office workers who move there also work remotely. High-speed rails that pass through Fresno will make this area even more attractive. The bullet train can easily connect your residence to your workplace. This is going to encourage a lot more people to move into this town and improve the overall condition. This fact has incited the interest of multiple venture capitalists. Several of them have even begun to buy plots in and around this area in anticipation of the high-speed rail. However, the people of Fresno will have to face one small challenge. As you know, civil engineering construction work lasts for more than a year. This will be magnified in the case of large-scale projects like this one. The construction work will clog the downtown streets. It'll be a lot of a headache for 530,000 residents. But considering the fact that these people will have a better quality of life once that project is completed, we think that's a minor inconvenience. Today, the bullet train project in the United States faces several challenges. Although finding a balance between funding and costs is an important problem, engineering challenges cause major concerns. While laying out the track for a train, it passes through the San Gabriel and Tehachapi mountain ranges, but the system was built to withstand California's infamous earthquakes. Constructing a track through the mountains might wake this arrangement. So, to find an appropriate solution, an advisory panel was created to provide valuable input. Do you think the US bullet train project is the future of sustainability? Would this project be effective in solving environmental problems? Let us know down in the comment section below. Thanks.